Hello, welcome to my vlog. Today, I am going to talk about live data. My name is Ian, and I am a coder rambling. Live data was announced at Google I.O. 2017. Live data can be described as a data holder that can be observed in the context of a fragment or activity lifecycle. In order for me to explain how this works, I'm going to need to draw up a diagram on the board. So here is my rough attempt at a diagram. In this case, we have an owner, the caller, the thing that observes the live data. Now, let me explain this. We have an owner. This can be anything. This can be a view model. This is basically the calling code. Should have really called it the caller. So the caller creates a new observer and the caller observes the live data with the arguments of lifecycle owner followed by the observer. Now when the live data's value changes, and in this case, the live data is setting its own value, although you may subclass live data and allow other things to set its value, an unchanged callback will occur to the observer that you registered with the live data. At some point when the lifecycle owner goes into a resumed transitions are resumed and started state, on active will be called. This may mean that observers are registered with live data, but are not active. When the lifecycle owner goes into an inactive state, then this will be um, the transition of paused and stopped. We will find that an, an inactive callback is invoked on live data. Now, who calls these? I've done some digging and it's some class called lifecycle registry, which does it in a roundabout way through a wrapped observer, but we don't want to get into that. So in a nutshell, you can register an observer and this observer will be bound in the context of the lifecycle owner. Now, if the lifecycle owner transitions into the destroyed state, the observer will be removed unless you called a special method, which is observe always. And you can look at that in the documentation. Now there are a couple of subclasses of live data. One of those is mutable live data. Now this class is a simple version of live data that exposes a set value and get value method. I probably didn't mention that live data has a set value and a get value method, but these methods are protected. Mutable live data, subclasses live data, and overrides the set value and get value method, making them public. The next subclass is mediator live data. The mediator live data is very useful for listening to other live data sources. You have a method on there. So I couldn't fit the method name in here, but mediator live data has a method add source which you can add a source live data and an observer. But when the source live data changes, the observer will be called. Mediator live data is useful for things like maybe waiting for a batch of live data to finish. One thing I forgot to mention is that live data is a generic type. Normally, I think live data would probably be used by the new view model API to persist values across configuration changes. Coupling this with the ability to register observers with the activity and fragments lifecycle, live data is a good citizen with the Android system. I think the best thing to do is probably sit down and write up a code example. I've created a simple project in Android Studio 3 Preview. It has a simple activity, live data example activity, and I've created a custom implementation of live data. To use live data, you need 
a couple of dependencies and an annotation processor dependency, which is the Android architecture lifecycle components 1.0.0-alpha1. So this is very new stuff. Going to my uh, logging live data example, I have this custom implementation, which I have overridden the onactive method and I am just going to log this saying logging live data when active and I've overridden the inactive method and I'm going to log this logging live data went inactive. Now I've overridden the set value method of this custom imp implementation because live data doesn't expose set value it's actually marked as protected by setting it public it means that I'm able to show you in my example of how setting a value will trigger an ARM server. So going to my very simple activity you can see that importantly we must subclass live cycle activity in order to give the live data along with its observer the life cycle in which the observer will be bound to. Now you don't need to use life cycle activity if you jump in there you can see that all it does is provide a life cycle registry it implements an interface life cycle registry owner so this is all you need to do to implement a life cycle registry owner in your own activity so following through the code, I create an instance of logging live data, and then I observe logging live data with this observer. When the value changes, and you can see that the value here is being changed on the next line. So when this value changes, all I do is log an observer unchanged called event. Now, if we look at the console, we can see that this has already been triggered because I have my activity um, started in this emulator window here. And the first thing that happened was logging live data when active observer on change was called so this is where I set value live data now the next thing you can see that it went inactive and active now if I clear the console we can see that um, if I close or, or turn the screen of the emulator off I get a logging event logging live data went inactive and if I turn it back on I get another logging event logging live data was active so this shows us that when a live data's observer's life cycle owner goes into a pause state it will go inactive and when it goes into a resume state it will go into active and that's pretty much it